morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you find yourself. Fudge Dice Roll here, and we are back in Iowa Plains View on Farming Simulator 22. Uh, so, if you guys know from the last video, a lot of stuff happened. Um, that's okay. Sometimes accidents happen. But what we're going to do is uh, just keep on keeping on. So we're going to push into here. And we are going to grab our subsoiler. And what I am planning on doing is hitting field 7. We're going to do everything that we can to get field 7 subsoiled so that we can go ahead and plant ourselves a, uh, a winter uh, green manure crop, a.k.a. oilseed radish. Uh, I want to get oilseed radish out here onto the field. Part of me really wants to get a mulcher. I don't really think I have money for a mulcher, do I? I don't think I do, unless I were to, like, lease a mulcher. Um, oh, that's my own stuff, genius. I'm like, why can't I see any mulchers? Um... This horsed one would be nice, but I'd have to use the big tractor for it. Um, hmm. How much would it cost to rent you, at uh, least you as equipment? Honestly? Hmm. But then I'm going to have to mulch and then take care of the soil. And that's not going to give me a huge bonus. That's not going to give me a huge bonus, honestly. So... It's just not worth it to do right now. Maybe later on when I'm further into the game and I have a little more income that I can sort of spend. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and come out here onto the field. And we are going to just get our... Uh, we're going to get to the laborious task of subsoiling this field. It is not going to be quick. It's not going to be painless because this is a large field. Um, so. But it is what we have to do, right? Uh, I think what I should probably do would be to go ahead and give myself uh, two passes, a headland pass here. Just so that I have some turnaround room at this uh, very tight end. Do -do -do. Uh, okay. Let's... Uh, Ooh, okay, come on. Come on, thank you. Ugh, this isn't how I want to go about doing this field. I honestly, I, I truly wish that I had something a little bit bigger than this. But this is the tool that we're working with, so this is going to take an exorbitant amount of time. <laughs> this is going to be kind of an all-day affair, so I think uh, what I'm going to end up doing... Because we'll probably time-lapse a little bit of it. Oh, yeah. But um, I think I'm just going to kind of AFK do as much of this. as Well, not AFK, but as, as minimal kind of time as possible for you guys. So I'll go ahead and record probably a, a couple of uh, up-and-down passes in a time-lapse. And then I think we will pick back up from there. We're probably going to go ahead and roll into November and figure out what we're going to do. Uh, I think November we'll probably go ahead and plant this with oilseed radish. So we'll just take care of the field tonight with our subsoiling. And then tomorrow we will come back into the field. And we'll go ahead and get it all nice and planted up. So, so yeah, so let's, I guess, let's, let's shoot for that. That's going to be what we do, right? We're going to get the, we're going to get everything kind of taken care of now with the subsoiling get uh, everything nice and, and happy again and the thing is is that uh we're going to go ahead and let this uh field sit fallow or watch well, it's not going to be fallow because we're going to have all of our uh, oilseed radish in it over the winter uh but we're going to let this overwinter with oilseed radish but uh the the plan is to plant this with soybeans come next year and the beautiful thing about soybeans is that they are a crop that does not require nitrogen uh, they don't require a lot of nitrogen in the soil, so the beautiful thing about the oil seeds uh, is that it is going to put a little bit of nitrogen in, and like historically, uh, farmers will let ha will have an overwinter crop in their field generally, just something to keep the uh, the soil nutrition as well as to help prevent erosion. 
And that's what we're going to be using our oil sheet radish for, for a little bit of soil nutrition and prevent erosion. But uh, we don't have to worry about the nitrogen content for us planting the, soy the soybeans. So the soybean crop is going to be good for the field. And at the same time, uh, it's not going to be something that dictates like how much more fertilizer we need to add to the field because we're not going to need to add fertilizer to kind of keep up with uh, the needs. So a so soybean crop is going to be really good, but we are, after the soybean gets harvested, if we take a look up here on our calendar. So we will plant the soybeans in about May. We'll be able to harvest said soybeans in about October. And then the plan will be to plant winter wheat in either October or November uh, on top of this field. And so it's like, we'll be able to two cycle the field. We'll be doing soybeans and then winter wheat. But then the thing that sucks about that is that wheat can only like be harvested in July as the earliest, which means that we're not really gonna get another crop into this field unless we wanted to like plant canola and then rotate between wheat and canola, wheat and canola, wheat and canola. I'd rather not, honestly. <laughs> I'd rather not. Not a crop that I'm super duper interested in. Uh, although I wonder, like, what is canola paying out? Seven twenty nine. Wheat's paying four oh seven. So maybe, maybe that becomes a thing. Soybeans though. Soybeans pay like a mofo. So soybeans. They're gonna have to also be something that sits though, aren't they? Yeah. Soybeans sell the best in July, which is like the month after their final planting. So. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead, take care of this field, and we will go from there. I will give you guys a little bit of, uh, I'll give you guys like a little bit of mob time lapse here, montage, however you want to call it. And then we will we'll figure things out from there. So, yeah, there it is. Montage! All right, we are down finally to the last couple of rows here. This has taken forever. Uh, we have put some serious uh, hours on the tractor here, <laughs> but we're almost done. And yeah, I can't wait until I can get like a bigger plow or something in the future for dealing with this periodic plowing. Um, the subsoiler, man, it's just it's just too small. I know there's some, ooh, hello. Some good stuff in the used vehicle sales here. It's a nice little forage harvester. I mean, it'd be great if I had a need for a forage harvester, wouldn't it? But uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think we really have anything super wide on the, uh, I think eight meters is about as big as we get, but just the uh, the sheer, the, the requirements that you need, like a tractor with nearly 500 horsepower, that just ain't gonna happen anytime soon. I don't even think that there's a plow uh, that's well, like, what's the biggest plow here? 4.9, six meters, six meters is the biggest plow. So, oof, 
but yeah so we finally finished the cornfield here uh we will be in the morning time or i guess next month in november we're going to be going ahead and planting our uh our little cover crop for the season we'll be planting little seed radish in so so yeah man this took a lot longer than i thought it was going to um a couple of uh real world hours but that's fine it's nothing that listening to a fun little uh documentary or a podcast uh doesn't help speed along you know what i'm saying uh, i also think that i want to kind of start looking at the game more from like some like a role play like i want to stop kind of referring to it as a game and start kind of doing it as a role play sort of a thing um where i kind of talk more about like the farm kind of from a like a like a role place pers perspective so i think moving forward i'm gonna i'm gonna attempt to do more of that just just for my own kind of flavor um but yeah you know we put a number of hours on this tractor we're definitely gonna have to do some uh repairs and definitely gonna need to take it to go get top backup fuel wise honestly what i should do is i should look into getting uh, getting myself a little diesel tank installed here on the farm so that I'm not having to drive into town all the time to uh, refill my implements. I do have my uh, I do have all my work, my tools and stuff that I need to do maintenance in my shed so I should look into doing that I should look into maybe not a huge tank but I definitely think uh, I should look into that as uh just something that's going to help with operational efficiency here on the farm is being able to refuel here uh, instead of having to go all the way into town so uh yeah i think we just got another pass to go uh maybe a little bit of cleanup here on the edge but we will i'll be back uh next month and we'll kind of start going over our, uh, our plans here for the farmland and everything we got going on. I think we might be able to harvest our grass field, field 10. Uh, I think we might be able to do a little bit of harvesting there. And, or is it field 11 is my grass field? Field 11 is my field of grass, whoops. So, yeah, field 10 is planted with wheat right now. It's planted with winter wheat. It's been fertilized. Uh, it's been weeded. It is going to be good to go for the rest of the season. Uh, here, field seven, which was our big corn harvest. There's a lot that we still need to do to this field. This field, uh, I do need to get soil samples done. I do need to kind of check a few other things. If we take a look here, actually, at some of our historical data, our economic data. You'll see right now that we have put over a thousand dollars in fuel and uh, nearly twenty five hundred dollars uh twenty six hundred dollars in vehicle maintenance and so that's going to be something we're going to work off uh but i definitely think that we will be getting a better sale on the crops that we got from this field the 154 cubic meters of uh corn that we were able to process on the field this year uh, I think that we're actually going to be able to sell that for a much better sum of money than what was uh, what's been estimated. So I think I will try to take a portion of those proceeds and put that towards uh, paying to have uh, the agricultural uh, organization come out and run soil samples for the field. I could do the soil samples myself, uh, but this is kind of one of those situations where I'd rather have the professionals come out over me uh, renting equipment and trying to do it myself. So anyway, I will catch you guys next month uh, when we will be preparing the field to overwinter by uh, planting ourselves some oilseed radish. So I will see you shortly. All right. We are done. Uh, we ended up <clears throat> finishing just in the nick of time last night. And we are back here on the farm. Uh, we are back here on field uh, field seven, which is looking good. Uh, no soil data found for precision farming because we haven't been able to uh, 
to, to make any money yet so we can get that soil data. Uh, however, that's not going to matter with us going in planting a cover crop. So this is our, gonna be our first time running this uh, Amazon. Uh, so this is going to be pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, just look at that working with, that's phenomenal. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a headland pass and then we will get to the, uh, the down and back, which this should be substantially faster than what it took for us to get the field, uh, you know, get the field set up in the first place here uh, with all of our little bit of subswimming that had to be done in order to kind of break up that root structure and the rest of those stalks from our corn. So let's go ahead and cut ourselves a headland in and then we'll get this, uh, get this field all prepped and ready for the winter. Oh no, was I not paying any attention? Can I not plant oilseed radish? Nope, I can't plant oilseed radish. Oh no. Well, this isn't good. Cause oilseed radish or alfalfa or clover would have been great. I can't actually plant anything. I can't plant any of these. I should have looked that up. Oh, that is on me. Well, now we're going to have this field basically just sitting here over winter without any cover crop. Well, I now know for the future that October, I have to have my cover crops planted. This is most unfortunate for me. Uh, well, I guess we'll get this put back away. And... Uh, I guess I can go check field 11 to see if it's ready to be have the grass harvested. Uh, that is not how I expected things to go. That is most unfortunate. Here I was thinking I was going to do right by the soil and get a good crop in there to help prevent erosion. And yeah, here we are now just uh, putting this back. That is super unfortunate. But sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Just running out of time. Too many tasks. Not enough hours. All right, well, let's go ahead and get you set aside. Um, honestly, we could probably go ahead and chuck you as well. Oh, I still need to fill, the, fill this up with gas. And is there anything decent for sale at the... Nope, nothing really. Hmm. Well... Will I even be able to harvest my grass? Yeah, grass is harvestable all the way through. So I guess let's pop up to our grass field over here and see if it is even ready to be harvested. I mean, if nothing else, what I could do would be maybe to look at getting a few head of cattle now that I can mix some TMR. I'll just have to head in town and grab a little bit of mineral feed to mix in with the rations, but, oh boy. I feel like that was such a rookie move. I feel like I knew better, but it happens to the best of us. Oh, hey, this grass is ready for harvest. So that, uh, this is what we can do here. Expected yields only 59% because I did not have a roller to kind of re-roll and increase the uh, yield potential. So we're not going to get a full yield out of this. I could just let it sit over winter, or I could harvest it now. And then I guess what I could do would be just to sell the bales off for some extra money, since I already have plenty here stored on, uh, on the property. So it sells for 189 62 49 so if i were to take all the silage that i have i could go dip that out sell all that in january and make a pretty good little bit amount of money off of that and i could have basically more silage here being prepped and ready so i can take that whole field of silage i think by january it would be uh It'll be fermented enough, too, that I could make a pretty decent-sized silage run. Let's see. Let's do a quick little bit of math here and kind of figure out what it is that we want to do. Let's see how many silage bales I have over here 
in our bale storage facility. Our little uh, little pop up here, our e tunnel. Uh, I have thirteen round bales of silage at fifty five hundred liters a piece. So if we take a look at that, we take that fifty five hundred and multiply that by 13 and then we will so 71 5 so we'll take 71 so let's clear that take 71 and we'll multiply that by uh 189 so we got roughly we have roughly 15k uh fifteen thousand dollars worth of silage bales presently here in the tunnel which isn't bad uh hmm. okay well then what i could do is yeah i could get out here i could mow this and then just uh mow it windrow it collect it all up i'd love to be able to use my little potting your cart but i don't really need it um so yeah okay i think that's what we'll do i think we'll go get uh we'll go get the 6150 pop over to here mow everything and then uh get it windrowed get it bailed and wrapped and then everything stored in over there all right um yeah let's just go ahead and get that knocked out All right, so we finished the field out there for the uh, actual bailing. We still have to go out and wrap. Um, but, yeah, a total of 31 bales of just uh, what's going to be just straight-up silage. So this is going to be awesome. We should have a really good amount of silage that we could sell. I do need to get <laughs> the tractor uh, into town so that I can go ahead and top up the gas tank in it because uh we are we're sitting pretty low we we're sitting pretty low so i'm gonna go ahead well hold on how much would it cost for me to go ahead and just have somebody come out and install a tank for me out here um yeah it's a, i mean even the small tank is quite expensive um yeah it's gonna be more cost effective for me just to drive in town even if it's not the most time effective thing to do but no time is money money is time uh and right now we have some time but we don't have money yet uh we should be getting a really really good uh, uh, really really good harvest a little return on our harvest here actually if i punch numbers real quick after I get this uh, back back in here, uh, there we go. Make it a little bit tighter. I think uh, having these dual wheels on the back is just really kind of throwing off my backup game here. That's just me though. I'm not really used to running dualies on the backs of uh, of my tractors, but it just seemed. It seemed like it was going to be like the kind of best bang for my buck having this lighter weight tractor uh real quick let's go ahead and punch some fast numbers if i've got a total if i were to sell all of my silage at once 
So that would be a total of 100 divided. Okay. So we would be looking at a profit somewhere around $26,000 uh, with these fresh bales that are on the field now, as well as uh, the bales that are already in our uh, in our e-tunnel over there that are already fermented. So, uh, you know, honestly, might not... Uh, might might not be something outside of the realm. Maybe I won't sell all of them because I would like to keep some to turn into mixed rations or taking care of cattle. But right now, I don't really have cattle money. Now, I should be getting a real good payout, right? Uh, once I go ahead, pull my grain and take it, take my, my corn and my wheat in uh, and sell them in town here in the December, January time frame when we're going to kind of be at peak pricing, uh, I should... I should see a nice little jump up for the year. I should hit about the uh, roughly the hundred thousand dollar mark, but we still have we've got vehicle maintenance to cover. Uh, I've got seed and fertilizer that I'm going to need to get. I'm definitely going to have to make my way down uh, to the co-op and pick up some lime for the fields. Uh, I would like to try to lime uh, field seven if I can before we plant in our crop of uh of soybeans this uh this coming season so yeah right now it's just gonna be like a lot of uh basic overwintering work i'm gonna get the rest of those bales bailed up and i'm just gonna kind of uh i guess i'll i'll come back and and see you guys in a few months when we can hit the uh we can hit hit the the planting season come springtime so uh yeah I'll, uh, I'll be back with you guys in a couple of months, and we will kind of go from there. So take care, and I will catch y'all in the next one.